make room for you to move Open our eyes to see your glory Drawing us deeper in you Uh, last week, rather, I was out. Pastor Christian did a great job. Ako po ay nakapagpatapos na ng is- bunso kong anak. Akala ko, okay na, okay na. Konti palakpak ko, naigapang. Akala ko, pwede na siya magtrabaho. K-12 lang pala. Sabi ko, apat na taong pa ako makukuba sa iyo, anak. Pero sabi ko, pag, pagbutihin mo anak, ha? Because, pero sabi ko sa kanya, you know what, anak, in reality, the Bible says, man does not live on bread alone. Pwede ka naman actually mabuhay kahit di ka magtapos. Na joke lang yun. Okay, so, <laughs> but in every word of God, sabi ko, ipurso mo yan, eh, and she's gonna take up uh, interior designing sa USD. Okay, mag- mag-enroll na kami tomorrow. But, uh, we're, we, are, we are on a series, Make Room, and uh, uh, the songs, we made a song uh, for this series. We have a Spotify playlist. Just type uh, play, uh, Make Room uh, uh, album, and you can hear all the songs that we're singing here. So, Ani Spotify? Tinatanong ni Lola. Mm, Tanong niyo na lang po sa anak niyo. But anyway, the title does not mean a posture of accommodating. Sometimes we use make room or make room for dessert. Or can you make room for my friend? No, 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 no. The idea of making room is a posture of yielding. It's a posture of really lordship. 101 lang to, basic to. That you're not just making room for God, you're taking everything out so that God will come in. When God comes into the picture in our lives, Hindi lang niya gustong to come over. He want to take over. Right? Hindi niya gusto na, o oh, sige na, dito na lang ako sa dine-in. No, 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 no. Gusto niyang puntahan yung mga lugar na ayaw mo puntahan sa bahay mo. Have you ever had visitors like that? I have a friend na nagpapa-Airbnb ng mansion niya sa Cebu. At believe me, pag nagpa-Airbnb siya, yung kanilang uh, master's bedroom is a no-no. Hindi pwede yung mga nag na Airbnb sa, sa, uh, sa master's. It's a no-no for them to come in. But when God comes to the picture, He specifically wants to come in to the places na ayaw mo. Right? And sometimes, ganun tayo kay God. God, sige na, pasukin mo yung finances ko. Sige, tingnan mo, nagtatights ako. Pero yung love life ko, huwag naman. I don't want to make room for you in my love life. Kasi yung ex ko nakikipag-flirt. I know, I'm married, pero... Mm, papi ang dating niya, papi. So, no. When you want to make room, it's a posture of honoring and yielding, submitting to the Holy Spirit. And we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. This is a series about Holy Spirit, the least known God. We know the Father, we know the Son, but rarely we know the Holy Spirit, right? And from the Word itself, Holy, okay, He's, He is the member of the Trinity that's, called, that, 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 that's primary role really is to make us holy. The word holy simply means uh, to sanctify. We're going to talk about sanctification this morning. And when you say sanctification, it simply means to set apart. Okay? We have four chairs available here, five. Papunta mo limang senior citizen dito. So sanctification simply means to set apart, to make holy, to cleanse. And when you say sanctification, understanding the Holy Spirit as the one who set believers apart from the wicked ways of the world. So yun po yung function niya. The role of the Holy Spirit is to set apart the believers, tayo po, from the wicked ways of the world, pero not just for the sake of setting apart, but then again, towards the works and purposes of God. So you set it apart for a specific purpose. When you dedicate, when you make something holy, when you offer something to God, it means I'm going to set this apart, but for God's purposes. I love what this author uh, wrote. Uh, Jerry Bridges is one of the, uh, he's a great author. He wrote a lot of books. Uh, He's also a speaker and a theologian, a Christian author, and also a staff member ng The Navigator. So, medyo alam niyo Navigators. And it's interesting because when he wrote this book, there's this page that was written about this struggle. And and I I don't want to really hassle you through all the, poetic wordings niya kasi it was written in 1978 but I just want to read it uh, briefly uh, he shared something about really the, 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 the propensity for us yung tendency po natin and we're talking about a, a staunch firm believer of Christ like, like him and sabi niya one morning as he was doing his quiet time 
Ang quiet time niya is, For sin shall not be your master. Wow, what a good quiet time, isn't it? For sin shall not be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. So, sobra siyang engross sa quiet time niya, and then the, suddenly the phone rang, and then medyo malalalim ang kanya mga English dito. The shrill ring out of the telephone shattered the stillness of the beautiful Chris Colorado morning. Wala ko naiintindihan sa mga words na yun, okay? Pero mukha ang ganda, okay? Now, on the other end was the one, yung tumawag daw po, was one of those utterly impossible individuals God seemed to have sprinkled around here on earth to test the grace and the patience of His children. Have you ever encountered people like that, yung mga EGR na tao? Extra grace relative, ne, ni relative, required, right? Yung mga kamag-anak mong parang pinadala talaga ni Satanas. Para itest talaga kung born again ka. Meron kang ganon? Wag mo kung katabi mo. May ngunguso eh. Hindi siya yon, right? But then again, sabi niya, I hung up the phone, binagsak niya yung pambilaba niya, seething inside the anger and resentment and perhaps even hatred. So here's a guy who's so engrossed into his quiet time. Sabi niya, grabbing my jacket, I walk into the cold air to regain my composure. And then the quietness of my soul, so carefully cultivated in my quiet time with God that morning, has been ripped into shred and replaced with a volatile, steaming, emotional volcano. Now he posted this question, does the Bible really have any answers for real life? When you read the Bible, parang it's too good to be true. Parang ang mabait ng tao, nagpo-forgive. And oh, but si Jesus nasa cross, can it really happen in real life? And then sabi niya, with all my heart. I desire to live an obedient, holy life. And there's no question about it. If you're a Christian, of course, it's our desire. But that desire turned into utter defeat. Sabi niya, yet there I was, utterly defeated by one phone call. To some of you, it's not just one phone call. Some of us are so into it we're so into religiosity, we're so into God, we're so into spirituality, but we are utterly defeated by one website. Hello. To some of you, it's not one website. To some of you, by one flirtatious text of an ex. Nakita ka sa Facebook, married ka na with children, and then yung ex mo, nag-message lang, PM pa. Oh, I'm happy for you. You're married with children. By the way, I'm divorced. Mm. It's not a question of do you want to obey God? No, 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 no. As if you're a Christian, I hope you have the desire to live an obedient, holy life. But how many of you would agree with me that desiring isn't enough? I desire po mayat. Nag-decision ako mag-gym. The following day, I decided to quit. So, para, and, and ganun lang kadali yun, right? Desire is good. Making a decision is great. But then jumping, really jumping and, 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 and disip, discipling, disciplining yourself rather, and then finding yourself delighted na ginagawa mo yun will eventually bring you to your destiny. Now here's my question to all of us. Is it really possible to live a sanctified life? In this sin-infested world, na pagka nag-drive ka from your house to, to C5, hindi mo mamimiss yung isang katutak na billboards ng mga nakahubad na babae o mga machong lalaki. Hindi ko magets okay? I, I know, I have friends here na mga nasa marketing. Pero ang ina-advertise mo, chinelas. Yung babae nakahubad. Sabi ko, ano nangyari? Ba't wala akong makita chinelas? Yung babaeng katawan na 98% ng billboard is a woman na full of skin lang and they're advertising what? a juice or whatever. Is it really possible to live a sanctified business life in a, in a world na full of greed? Is it really possible to live a sanctified life if you're a politician in this world na full of corruption? Is it really possible to live a sanctified life as a student where the norm is, you know, walang God, atheism, just do if you feel like doing it, if it feels good, it must be right. Is it really possible to live a sanctified life as a housewife? Na patasang patasang presyo. And here you are, hamang tumataas yung presyo, yung budget mo, lumeliit. And there's an insecurity and fear will creep in. 
Is it really possible to live a sanctified life as a Christian? In this world na full of sin, it's really possible. First and foremost, I want to ask you this question. Are we even aspiring for it? Or are we just, you know, born again naman ako, I, I'm heading to heaven. But I'll tell you something why you need to aspire to live a sanctified life. Because it says here in 1 Thessalonians 4.3, for this is the will of God. Now imagine, this is the will of God for you. There's another half of that verse, so medyo may reveal lang yan, may suspense. Because all of us, we're thinking, ano kaya will ni Lord sa akin? For me to be rich? I know what the will of God for me, to be healthy. I know the will of God for me to find a partner. I'll tell you what the will of God is. The will of God for you is your sanctification. Everybody say sanctification. sanctification. The reason why we need to aspire for this, it's because that's the will, that's the purpose, that's the objective of God for all of us. That we will live a set-apart, sanctified, holy life. Now, if that's the will of God, how come it's not happening? How come the opposite is happening? You know you're a Christian. But as you look at your life, hindi malayo sa mga non-Christian na opisina mo, right? In fact, his study, Barna Research will always tell us, in the States, the divorce rate of born again and the so-called non-believers are practically the same. How come sa office, ay Christian ka pala, hindi halata ah. Kasama ka namin nanonood ng mga porn pagka break time. May sarili ka supply ng mga FHM. Some of us here today, hindi makita ng mga kasamahan natin. Ah, Christian ka pala. Kala ko born against sky. Born against or burn again. Ano ba tawag sa inyo? So as we talk about making room this morning, hopefully we can learn today on how really the Holy Spirit can help us live a sanctified life. Can we bow down our heads in prayer and let's just lift this sermon to God. Lord, we lift up this sermon to you. Lord, apart from you, we will never live a sanctified life. So Lord, this morning, help us to see beyond the, the traditions, to see beyond the mga rituals namin na ginagawa, and there's no life to it. But Lord, Holy Spirit, would you just refresh your people anew, Lord God? Holy Spirit, we just breathe in us, as we sang a while ago, breathe in us a fresh revelation of who you are. Para Lord, maipamuhay namin yung buhay namin according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's open our Bible to Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. I'm going to read it and we're going to uh, flesh it out one by one. Oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you, this is Paul addressing a church the Galatian church. It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. And in verse 2, it says here, let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the Lord, by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit? Are you not being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain? If indeed, it was in vain. Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracle among you do so by works of the, of the law or by hearing with faith? Just as Abraham believed God, it was counted to him as righteousness. So, let me give you a short background para naman po to make sense sa mga pinag-uusapan natin ngayon. Galatia, anybody here, uh, you know Galatia, kung saan siya located? Between Kamuning and Roosevelt. Okay, so, let okay. This is a modern-day central Turkey na po siya. So Galatia was one of the first uh, cities or uh, uh, province that uh, Apostle Paul dinaanan po niya ng first missionary journey niya. The Galatia province was named after, uh, it was established rather by the first Emperor Augustus in 25 BC. So pag tinignan mo, marami pong naborn again during the time ni Paul sa Galatia. And uh, if you look at Acts chapter, chapter 14, the man on the gate, nung po nandun siya sa gate na lame, pinagaling po, that was in Galatia. So pag tinilang po natin, si Paul started this around 47, 48 BC, uh, uh, AD, and then yung pong mga tao na born again. There was a move of the Holy Spirit, whether Jews naging born again, or mga Gentiles na born again. So there's a mixed group in the church. Now, a year or so after, Paul, wala na po siya sa Galatia, wrote a letter dun sa church and established na. So you're getting the point. Around 49 uh, AD, he wrote this Galatian letter. Are you, are you following? So may na-birth the church, 
May nagsimula na po yung church, may mga leaders na nag-start, and now Paul was writing ang opening niya sa chapter 3 of Foolish Galatians. What an opening, right? Para yung nanay mo sumulat sa'yo, nagdo-dorm ka sa Maynila, sa probinsya, nanay mo sumulat, oh foolish son, di ba? <laughs> ano kaya mo kalokohan? And worse, who has bewitched you? Ano nangyari sa inyo? Sino nagkulam sa inyo? And this was just after a year or so na nagkaroon po ng church. And then, and bakit ba bad trip si Paul sa kanila? Sabi, may lang ko isang tatanong sa inyo. Na-receive nyo ba yung Holy Spirit through works? I mean to say, na-earn nyo ba yan? Or just by hearing with faith? So he's talking about the salvation they received when he was there. Nag-share po siya ng gospel. And Paul was asking, Nung bang nag-share ako sa inyo, did I require something of works? O ilan na nasunod mo nun sa Mosaic Law? Ay, kulang ka pa ng dalawa. Gawin mo muna yan and then God will give you the Holy Spirit. And then Paul was asking, is that true that way that your good works? Or by obeying the Mosaic Law? Or, because the Gentiles, wala naman po sila Mosaic Law, or na-receive mo yung gospel just by hearing and putting your faith in Christ. It's kind of like Paul was reminding them of Romans 6.23, for the wages, that's something you work for, for the wages of sin is death, that death is eternal death. Pag hindi nyo po tinanggap si Jesus at ikay namatay, pinagtrabawahan mo yon. For the wages, wages means you work for it, right? So yung impyerno is something na pinagtrabawahan mo actually. Pagdating mo rin sa minsan ni Satanas, sali ka rito, anak, ang laki ng mansion mo rito, ang sama mo sa lupa eh. You work for it. I mean, that's what the Bible says. For the wages of sin is death. Thanks be to God that Romans 6.23, nakita niyo letter A, B, 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 N, half lang siya nung the whole verse. Because meron siyang B. Yun yung B. Ayun, no? 6.23, B. But the gift compared to wages, the gift is not something you earn. It's from the basis of relationship, right? It's not about the recipient. It's about the giver. But the gift of God is what? Compared to eternal death, here, eternal life. Is it by good works? No? By, in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let me give you a picture of what justification or salvation that we receive. Justification simply means we're acquitted from the penalty of sin. Ito po yung buhay natin when we uh, got born again. That is justification. Uh, bear with me, okay? I'm more of a teacher for the next two weeks. The more practical side will be the fifth week and sixth week. So, foundational po tayo ngayon about the Holy Spirit. So, nung nareceive mo si Christ, you have been justified. You have been acquitted from the penalty. Remember, the wages of sin is death. But then, Jesus died on our behalf when we put our faith on the finished work of Christ on that cross 2,000 years ago, hindi po tayo pinako, hindi tayo kailangan gin mabute because no one is good. By, by, by simply putting our faith in the finished work of Christ, you have been justified. Now, look up on the screen. Justification is a one time work of God, okay? It's resulting in a declaration of not guilty before Him. So, wala kang participation sa justification. Solely the work of God. Christ alone by faith alone, right? So John, wala kang participation. Justification is the work of God alone. Now, moving on because there's a next part ng pagiging Christian mo. So justification, and then let's move on to the next slide. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the Lord by hearing with faith? First thing you need to understand how to live, the possibility of living a sanctified life is this, that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. At the time of justification, the Holy Spirit renewed us. The Holy Spirit gives us new nature. The old is gone, the new has come. So, malino po ito, is it possible to live a sanctified life? Yes. Point number one, progressive to, listen up. The Holy Spirit dwells in in us. That's a starting point on how to live a sanctified life. He is living in us. So if you're a born-again Christian, I hope you're aware na yung Holy Spirit nasa yo, right? Anybody here, gagawa ka ba ng kalokohan pag yung tatay mo nasa bahay? Kanyari, yung tatay mo, kasama mo sa kwarto. 
magbubview ka ba ng mga site na hindi dapat i-view? Magbababasag ka ba ng base? O ibubuli mo ba yung kapatid mo pag nandun yung tatay mo sa bahay? Of course not, right? Yung mga bully rito ng kapatid, di ba? Pag wala si nanay, saka si tatay, ha? Akin yung pork chop, sa'yo ketchup. Okay, sa, yun ang mamahili ka mang bully, right? <laughs> chop din naman ang huli ng sa'yo, eh. But imagine if you are aware that the, your father is, is with you. Your mother is just in the house. Hindi ka gagawa ng kalokohan, tama? Kasi magsusumbong lang yun. Mami, oh, sinabi ni kuya, pangit daw ako. Sabi mo na, anay, hindi ko sinabi. Huwag ka maniwala sa pangit na yan. <laughs> and understanding the Holy Spirit dwells in us will at least give us a starting point. Oh my God. Lolokohin ko tong kanegosyo ko eh. Hindi man niya alam, pero the Holy Spirit dwells in me. Are you listening? Makikipag-flirt ako rito sa ex ko. Hindi nga makikita ng wife ko dahil hindi yung teki. Walang alam yun sa viber-viber, pero yung Holy Spirit alam. Dito pa lang, actually, pwede na ako mag-end eh. Kasi an understanding that you have the Holy Spirit in you, man. When nando ka sa basement tree ng bahay mo, nagpa-pornography ka, man, the Holy Spirit is grieving inside of you. Oh, man. Anak, ba't ginagawa yan? Sisirahin niya ng buhay mo. Sisirahin niya ng intimacy mo sa future husband mo, wife mo. The Holy Spirit does in us. So let's move on. Papagrabe ito, pare. At para ma-assure ka na you can live a sanctified life. Moving on. Are you so foolish? You began with the Spirit. That's when you, we get born again. We got born again. And then now, talking about a second phase of our Christian life. Are you being perfected by the flesh? Ito po kasi nangyari sa Galatian Church. May mga Jew na na-born again. So yung mga Jew, okay? Yung mga Jews, yung mga film believer po na, na mga Old Testament, ano nila, a uh, 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 mosaic law. Na-born again sila at gusto nilang i-apply yung mosaic law sa mga Christian. Ang tawag sa kanila mga fans ni Judah ito eh. Judaizers, okay? Sa so, mga fans ni Judy Anto. Ang sinasabi nila, okay lang naman si Christ. Pero dagdagan mo ng works. Ay, born again ka na, may faith ka na in Christ. Dagdagan mo ng mga mosaic law, sundin mo to. Most especially for the male, circumcision. Because you are not truly saved pag hindi mo to sinunod. Kaya bad trip si Paul. And may tatawa tayo sa mga Judaizers, but aren't we like the Judaizers as well? Nandiyan si Jesus... Pero Jesus, sasamahan ko na ng konti lang. Kasi Chinese kami, konting pungsoy lang. Wala naman sa mga ilalagay yung salamin na yon na maraming salamin sa may arapan ng bahay. Meron bang ganun sa inyo? Tapos naniniwala ka, basta facing south yung salamin, yung swerte, papaso. E eh, problema, hindi mo alam kung saan yung south or north, di ba? <laughs> Dear yung compass, nasaan? Okay, so... Are you following? Yes, Jesus lang, pero tumataya ka sa loto. Eh, wala namang mawawala. Ano ba naman to? Scratch, scratch lang. Laro-laro lang to. Nandiyan si Jesus, pero meron ka pang additional na something. Nandiyan si Jesus, pero kailangan man daya sa tax. Baka si Jesus, baka kapusin ka. May train tax, tax law pa ngayon. Baka mamaya, hindi na train yan. LRT na yan, Lord. So, kailangan kong dayain to. We are like Judaizers. Because we're saying Jesus is not enough. That's why we have to make this carte, isn't it? Very Pinoy. And sometimes we think that sanctification is something that we can do. Akala natin na sa sanctify, nagiging holy ang tao pag nawisi ka ng holy water. Anybody here, naniwala ka nung araw, oh my gosh, hindi to mamasaki tubig, oh. <laughs> and feeling mo, pag natamaan ka ng tubig, magiging holy ka. No, no, I'm, not, I'm not even being funny. But you have this mindset, pag katinamaan ng tubig na yon. Magiging holy ko ano man yun, yung aso mo na dinala mo, yung misis mo, pinaliguan mo na, hindi pa rin talaga mabago. Ikaw, nilublub ka na sa drum ng holy water. Bakit? Because we're thinking it's something that we can do. Huwag natin pagtawanan yan because some of you are thinking you're a born again if you step into this holy building. You're thinking that this building is holy kasi nandito si pastor. You have this mindset na iba lang ang religion mo na if you step into a building, it makes you holy. Oh my gosh, I feel the presence of God here. Tapos pag nasa bungang ka, nasa sabungan, parang feeling mo hindi ka holy. Pag nando ka sa bar, hindi ka holy. Pag nasa office ka, hindi ka holy. So you're thinking that holiness is boxed in this building. 
Some of you have this mindset, and you know people like that, that this world is really sinful. We have to get out of this world. You know those people, your ascetism, thinking that unless we separate ourselves from the world, we cannot fully commit and dedicate our lives to God. So, itong mundo na to, worldly, mamumundo ka ko. Pupunta ako ng Mars or Neptune. <laughs> Pupunta sila sa bundok without any technology, without any uh, uh, parang uh, influence of modern technology. And they're thinking, I'm away from the world, I will be holy. Eh. No, holiness is not something we do. Holiness is something we receive. So, let's move back to our diagram. Justification, a one-time deal, but your journey in life, sanctification. So, you started being justified, it's a one-time deal. But, anybody here, no matter born again ka, buhay ka pa? Of course, nandito ka pa, okay? So, you have to live your life, kahit na born again ka, and that's what we call sanctification. But oftentimes, here's the problem. Look up here. The reason why some of you have been compromising your faith. The reason why some of you are still in fear na hindi ma, ma, malayuan yung dating buhay despite being justified because we're, we're, we're applying human effort on the sanctification process. Now, two things happen pagka ikaw ay nag solely on human effort. You want to change, and there's no question about that. Gusto mo magbago, gusto mo iwanan yung kabit mo, gusto mo iwanan yung drugs, alcohol mo, gusto mo tigil yung pornography mo, gusto mong patawarin yung biyanan mo, okay? Gusto mong mahalin yung misis mo kahit na as bad trip ka, gusto mong patawarin yung mister mo, kahit ng babae, ngayon bumalik sa'yo, pero you find yourself unforgiving pa rin pag naungkat yung pangalan lang ng babae. So, because you're trying to be sanctified based on human effort. Here's two things that happen when it's solely based on human effort. First, you will conform. Everybody say conform. Gusto mo magbago, titinan mo lang mga ibang born again. Uy, nagti-t-shirt sila ng Christian. Bibili na ko dyan ng t-shirt na Christian. Uy, nagti-church sila. Mag-ti-church sila ako. Uy, may dala silang Bible. Bible. Ang laki ng dala mong Bible. Oh my God, laki ng Bible mo. Let's open the Bible. <laughs> Ang laki ng Bible mo, no? Genesis, di ba? And, and, and you find yourself, bakit ganun? Bakit I always find myself, balik na naman sa square one? Because you're just trying to conform. But the other side naman, gusto mong magbago, ayaw mo na maging adik, ayaw mo naman babae, you're trying to reform. Reformation based on human effort is short-lived. Because reform and conform are primarily external and fully dependent on human effort. Reform simply means there's this self-will and sheer determination to go back to your original state. Hindi naman talaga ako dati babaero eh. Eh siyempre grade 1 ka pa lang nun eh. Okay. Eh nung nag-high school ka, babaero ka na. So, you're trying to go back to your original state. The problem with your original state is your original state mo, you're sinful. But you know, what God wants from us is not transform, or conform or reform, but being transformed. And then the Holy Spirit, look up on the screen, in Titus 3, 5, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness. Hindi sinabi ni Jesus, hmm, mabait na tong si Jepa. Hmm, marami na siya natutulungan. Okay, bibigay ko na sa kanya Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. It's not according to our good works because the Bible is very clear, no one is good. But according to what? To His own mercy. At paano niyang ginawa yun? By the washing, regeneration, and renewal. Binabad ka, nilabhan, kinula. Yung nanay ko sa probisya, inalmirol. Alam niyo, almirol? Yung nakatayo yung kuhelyo kahit 10 years na yung long sleeves mo. Sabi ko, nai pa, ang tindi, Elvis Presley ako lagi ah. Yung uniform ko nung grade 1 hanggang kolehiyo na susuot ko. Yung medyas, okay? Kasi yung almirol nung nanay ko, talagang tayong tayo. Nakakahiwa nga rito pagka mali ka ng iling. <laughs> Sabi ko na yan, talim na to. Meron bang lisensya to? Illegal possession of deadly weapons to. Ha? Pag inilmirol niya, islak ko nung araw, pwede siyang pamatay. Ganun ang kristyano. We were rushed, regenerated, and renewed. Kanino? Through what? The Holy Spirit. So look up at the screen. Let's go back. The sanctification process should be done by the Holy Spirit. 
And oftentimes, we ignore this part. Akala natin si God, justification, God, dito ka lang involved. For the rest of my Christian life, I'm gonna do this my way. I'll try to be good. You can't. Yung goodness mo, self, selfish pa rin. You're good to some people, you're bad at some people. Why? Because yung good, yung may babalik sa'yo. Pag bad, mm, I don't wanna talk to you. So in reality, wala kang Holy Spirit. We just live our lives without fully understanding the power of the Holy Spirit. Kaya nga, pag natin dito, are you so foolish, you began by the Spirit and now being perfected by the flesh. We should be perfected by the Spirit as well. So point number two, the Holy Spirit works with us. Anybody here, you love coffee? Yun! Gusto mo magkape? Gusto mo pagkapihan? Ah, wag yun, iba yun, okay. Yung keyboardist natin, lagi itong gise, kailangan itong magkape. Bro, come here. Okay? Pagkakapihin kita ngayon ng libre, okay? Halika rito. Kala mo, nagjo-joke ako, ha? Mahilig kang magkape, ha? Bro, ang pakilala ka, ano pangalan mo? Ryan. Ryan, iba na pangalan mo ngayon, ha? Okay, so... Okay, Ryan, meron akong hinanda rito na kape for you, okay? Si Ryan, sabi niya, ay sa gitna, okay? Okay, para sa mga viewers natin sa all over the world, ay. So, Ryan, napapanood ka sa liman sulok ng uh, kwarto na to. Paggagawa kita ng kape, right? Itong pinakamasarap daw na kape, okay? Neth, kape, okay. Sabi ni Coco Martin, okay? Ayan. Salap. Okay. Hintayin lang natin, Ryan, because yung kaping ginawa ko sa'yo, ay, uh, it will take time. So, mga, <clears throat> kaya natin, mga two minutes, okay? So, Ryan, tikman mo nga yung kape na to. Kano lasa? <laughs> Lasang tubig lang. <laughs> Ryan, Ano kulang doon sa kape na ginawa ko sa kanya? Hindi, may kape na eh. Kailangan ba bahaluin to? Okay, tinan natin kasi sabi ni Ryan, lasang tubig. Yan. Yummy. <laughs> okay, Ryan, inumin mo ngayon. Ano ang difference? Ano? Okay to, okay? Nice, okay? So, Ryan. Anong difference kanina? Hindi na steer. Pero may kape na siya, right? You see, it's the same thing. Ryan, thank you. Pakibaba mo to. It's a partnership. In the sanctification process, you need to be involved. Sa justification, God alone, in the sanctification, it's a process, it's a partnership. The coffee, the coffee, the three-in-one was already there, right? In fact, if you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit is in you already. But you're not steering it. In fact, some of you are dis- disregarding Him, quenching Him, dishonoring Him, instead of using Him and asking Him to help you. Sanctification, we have a role to play. Si God na nagbigay ng puhunan, it's in you, but we have to do our part. Are you listening? Kaya oftentimes natatalo ka because you're not aware that there's a powerful, powerful God living, working in you. You're not just aware of it. Sa una, hindi mo alam na He's dwelling, talo ka na. Pangalawa, hindi mo alam na you can work with Him. In fact, the Bible says, but the Helper, look at the word, the Helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Papasok ka ng opisina. Nakikipag-flirt yung sekretary mo. E nagbasa ka ng Bible nung umaga. Right? The two shall become one. Honor the marriage bed. Man, pag tingin mo sa sekretary mo, I just read the word, the Holy Spirit to remind you, Jeff, kapabasa mo lang kanina, di ba? Hindi, nabasa ko, Lord, si David, daming asawa eh. <laughs> Mali pa ng application. Guys, look up here. Yung mga babaero dito na pinasabi sa Bible, marami namang polygamos. Hello, it's descriptive but not prescriptive. 
Nasa Bible yon because the Bible, walang tinatago, flaws and all. Pero tinan mo naging buhay ni David. Sa dami niyang asawa, ni-rape nung isang anak niya, yung isang anak niya, you don't want that, right? So don't tell me, eh, sa Bible, puliga mo sila, eh, pwede rin ako magpuliga mo. Ha? Nakita mo yung mga it- naging buhay ng mga taong puliga mo sa Bible? The Bible says, honor the marriage bed. Stick to your wife. The two shall become one. The Holy Spirit will remind you of that. Ang problema kung wala kang kinuhaya time. At ang nare-recall mo yung isang verse lang na Jesus wept. Iyak na lang ba ako? The late uh, uh, Reverend Billy Graham said, it is the business of the Holy Spirit to lift the veil. Satan has put uh, over our minds to illuminate them so that we can understand the things of God. He does this specially as we read and study the Word of God, which is the Holy Spirit has inspired. Eh kung wala kang quiet time, talo ka na. You went out of the battle without even having a weapon. Are you listening? Hindi ka nagbabasa ng Biblia? Mare naman. Tapos ang laman ng utak mo puro Netflix. Oh. Puro ka TV series. Puro mga kung pila- Kaya, ayun, influence ka ng mga napapanood mo sa TV. And here you are, Holy Spirit, ano ba mga ano? Wala. Wala sa remind. Wala kang dineposit. Wala ma withdraw. Right? And then here's the goal of God for us. And we, with unveiled faces, all reflect the Lord's glory. Remember, we were created in the image and likeness of God. Tama ba? Sa Garden of Eden, na marred. Di ba? Na dungisan. But the purpose of God, kaya tayo na born again, is to tra- transform us to be back in that image and likeness na first intention niya sa atin. Hello? With ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, which is the Holy Spirit. Look up here, guys. <clears throat> Justification one time, sanctification is a lifetime journey. Hanggat hindi ka na dededo, hanggat di dumalating si Jesus, sanctification is a process. You are a work in progress. He will begin a good work in you, will complete it. Kaya ikaw, stick ka lang. Holy Spirit, tulungan mo ako sa negosyo na to na magandang deal to pero parang may problema. Holy Spirit, pero di nagko-compromise na ako. Nang babae na rin ako dahil yung mga partner ko, nang babae, umiinom na rin ako. Oh, oh, boss, Holy Spirit, is these partners my provider or you are my provider? And then the Holy Spirit will remind you, anak, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you always. Because you're reading your Bible. Because you're living out Christianity. Because your provider is God and not those people. Let me throw you this question. What is the role of the Holy Spirit in your life as you are facing temptation? Kulang yan, today. What's the role of the Holy Spirit in your temptation today? Is it sexual temptation? Is it financial temptation? Is it moral temptation? Whatever temptation you're facing today, read the Word of God. Google mo Bible verses about kodi temptation mo. Print it out, memorize it, ipatatubo kung kailangan because it will help you. And lastly, the he who supplies, the word supplies carries the idea of, uh, the Greek word was epikorege, okay? It means to furnish or to present who will stay with you until the end. The word supplies there, the he who supplies the spirit to you, means to say, he's going to stick to you till the end. So the Holy Spirit doesn't just dwell in us. The Holy Spirit in Delisha works with us, but your future tense, the Holy Spirit actually secures us. Sabi dito, when you believed, you were marked with Him with a seal. I love the word. Yung Holy Spirit is a promise. It's a seal. Who is a deposit? Anybody here na buhay ka nung araw? Like in my case, sa probinsya. Pag bibili ka ng soft drinks, hindi pa uso yung plastic na lalagyan. Pag bibili ka ng soft drinks na bote, may deposit. Meron ba rito katulad ko na mayaman? Sa probinsya. Di ba, pag ibili ka litro, may 2 pesos. but may 2 pesos? Para ibalik mo yan. Kasi assurance yun na ibabalik mo yung bote, otherwise hindi mo ako dineposit mo. The Holy Spirit is like that. We were sealed with the Holy Spirit, assuring and guaranteeing what? Our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. For the meantime, in our sanctification, the Holy Spirit is in us. And one day when God comes, Jesus comes on His second coming. Titi na yan, sino yung mga may seal? Pasok, pasok. I remember in the early part of the century, 
There was this English missionary, an English missionary who died in India. So born again siya, missionary sa India. Ang nangyari, nung namatay siya, yung kapitbahay niya, na Indian, gustong nakawan. Patay naman na, mabait yung missionary na yan, walang, walang lakang mga pintuan. Lahat nung, nung gamit niya, nanakawin ko sa gabi. That's his intention. Nung nalaman nung uh, English consul sa India, ginawa niya, tumakbo siya sa bahay, nilagyan lang niya ng paper with the sealed affixed to it, the nation of England, the flag of England. The Indian guy didn't even dare to enter that house. Because on the door na walang lock was a seal. It's a piece of paper. But more than a piece of paper, affixed to that is the seal of England. The most powerful nation at the time. And he didn't dare to enter that house. Now let me tell you something. Your seal is more than just the nation of England. Your seal is God himself. The Holy Spirit is a seal guaranteeing you one day this body is not just sanctification but there's a third part and that's what we're going to learn today. Lastly, is it really possible as we end to live a sanctified life? Let's go through this. We don't have time. The starting point is justification. You've been justified. Mean to say the Holy Spirit dwells in us. On the sanctification part, the Holy Spirit works with us. Is it really possible to live a sanctified life? Yes. A resounding yes. Number one, an understanding that you've been what? Justified. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. He is living in you. But he's a gentleman. You can ignore him, quench him, grieve him. You can totally deflect him because he's a gentleman. Hindi tayo ginawang robot. Sundin mo na ako, wag kang mambabae. Apo, Holy Spirit, di na po ako titingin sa babae. Hindi siya ganun. Because he wants genuine relationship, right? Now, number two, in our sanctification process, the Holy Spirit is working with us. And thirdly, in the glorification, this is the time we're going to meet God. This is the time in all His glory, we're going to have our glorified body. Either when we die, or in the ng pagating ni Jesus, the Holy Spirit secures us. What a picture, isn't it? Is it really possible to live a sanctified life? Yes. Ang hina. Yes. Of course. Nasa yun na lahat. You're not asked to make a coffee na kukuha ka ng tubo para sa sugar, kukuha ka ng beans para sa coffee, kukuha ka ng creamer. No, 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 no. Nando na siya. It's in you. You just have to steer it. You just have to be aware of it. You just have to ask, Holy Spirit, help me in these trying times. And that's my prayer for all of us today. For us to live a sanctified life and understanding we've been justified and we are now being sanctified but the future looking ka, one day, kaya ako titiisin to, that's why I'm not gonna have sex sa mga ibang babae, hindi siya pagtitiis, it's a joy na sticking to your wife. Because I know one day, I'm gonna have my glorified body. I'm gonna stick to this business because these partners of mine, hindi silang provider ko. Because I'm being sanctified, kung may mga illegal to, I'm out of this business. May compromise, I'm out of this business. Ah, may kalukuan pa to, I'm out of this business. If you're a student, ah, may kodigo, uh, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because you're looking forward to the glorification part. I'm going to be with my maker one day. Amen? Let's all stand on our feet today as we end. This is just my prayer for you. I'll pray that this verse, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you, not partially, not initially, not I'll think about it, but completely, that's my prayer for you. I'm going to end in prayer through this verse. This is going to be my verse for all of us. Let's just bow down our heads. Lord, we pray this verse, Lord God, in First Thessalonians. Lord, living a sanctified life is really hard. Left to our own devices. We will always try to conform and try to reform. But you want us to be transformed. That's why, Lord, today... May the God of peace, you yourself, God, sanctify us completely. And may your whole spirit and soul, our spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until you come, Lord Jesus. And that's our prayer, Lord. Lord, preserve us. You don't want us to be born again and full of compromises. You don't want us to be born again and full of ne neglect. 
Lord, help us today, Holy Spirit. Would you just shower your people afresh? Can everybody say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come, Lord. Would you just come into the lives of these people? We may have stumbled. Some of you have stumbled. But take heart because Jesus Christ is not yet done with you. Believe me, some of you are compromising right at this very moment. I'll tell you something. Jesus Christ is not yet done with you. The Holy Spirit is continually setting you apart from the work that He has reserved for you. The work of God. And one day, listen up, if you just keep it, if you stick to it, one day we're going to be welcomed by God. Just being something well done, good and faithful servant. That's something we look forward to, Lord God. Father, we just want to honor you this morning. We just want to glorify you, Lord God. In everything that we do, may you be glorified and magnified. Holy Spirit, help us in the sanctification process that we will never neglect you. Just like that coffee, we just have to steer it because you are already in us, dwelling in us. We're not doing this alone. You are always a step ahead of us. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen, amen.